بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين and salam and love and respect to all of you my friends this is chapter 49 verse 11 or rather verse 10 11 and 12 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الإسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Such a beautiful sentences. When I read them, I reflect on them. I would ask myself, am I a true Muslim? Am I really adhering to these verses? Am I following them or just reading them in Ramadan? Just reading the Quran and not relating to it. Are we reading fairy tales, just the stories, or we are reading facts and realities? And aren't they instructions for us to lead a virtuous life, an honorable life? Of course, it's for us. And therefore, when we read the Quran to be inspired and to learn, and to implement what this book says, we will prosper. But if we read the Quran just for the sake of physical reading, without reflection, without pondering on this, without meditation, and without learning, then we are wasting our time. So number 11 says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. O you who believe, let not one people deride another. It may be that they are better than them, nor let women deride other women. It may be that they are better than them. And do not defame yourselves or insult one another with nicknames. How evil is the iniquitous name after having believed and whosoever does not repent they are the wrongdoers so gives three instructions here la yaskhar la talmizu wa la talmizu wa la tanabazu three instructions that do not First of all, do not deride each other. Do not ridicule each other. Why this, these verses came? Because there were some people around the Prophet, members of his community. We call the members of the community of the Prophet Sahaba, companions. One of them by the name of Thabit ibn Qais. He deride another member. He puts him down. And there were some women among the family of the Prophet, among his wives, they deride Um Salama, another wife of the Prophet. And there were some group of companions who were backbiting others. And they were some groups of the companions who were spying on others. So God came to address these issues. These are problems. First of all, Islam says that I'd love to see the community happy and prosperous. I don't like to see a community based on, sub based on suspicion, based on misunderstanding and in some cases based on 
enmity and hate. That's not a community. We should not turn our neighborhoods, our families, our streets into a war zone. We should turn our neighborhoods into sanctuaries for love, for care, for protection, for humanity, to exercise our mercy, our compassion, our forgiveness, our terbia, our manners. This is how we should turn our communities. So in Islam, community building is a priority. My friends, wherever you are, whether in the United States of America or Canada, North America or South America, Africa, Asia, Middle East, Australia, New Zealand, Caribbean, wherever, Europe, these are the teachings of our book. The priority is to build a community, a society which is healthy, morally healthy. Oftentimes we speak about physical diseases which are dangerous, but we tend to neglect moral diseases which are equally dangerous, very dangerous. We should keep the community healthy by not attacking each other, not ridiculing each other, but strengthening each other, supporting each other, and sometimes covering up for each other. God does not want someone who sits and he tries to find faults with his brethren, and he arguments these faults, and he speaks about them, and he brags about them, and he tries to spread them all over, this is not what God wants to do. God wants protection. God wants people help each other. God wants people to be positive with each other. The strength of a society does not lie with its only technology or economy, but with its manners too and its ethics too, with brotherhood and sisterhood with a mutual respect among the inhabitants of that society. When you see people respecting each other, you enjoy living in that society. Let me ask you something, friends. How many of you are immigrants? Probably those who watch me, many of them are immigrants. Immigrants who left Africa, East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, North Africa, Middle East, Indian subcontinent, some parts of, you know, Arab countries, non-Arab countries, and they sought refuge in some pockets, some countries in Europe or Canada or America. Why? Why not staying in your own countries? Part of it because of economic opportunities. This is right. But another part, because... These societies, unfortunately, they have many ills. And sometimes we can't afford living in such ill-founded society, which is very normal for people and very typical to ridicule each other, to put each other down, to deride each other, to, to be used, used to bail tearing tail-bearing or, or back-biting. They are used to it. And this is not right. That society would turn into what? Into a forest, into a jungle. It won't be a human society. But when you live in a, a society where people are honorable, they treat each other with honor, with respect, with dignity, with selflessness, not selfishness, selflessness, you enjoy living in that neighborhood. You enjoy living in that community. You enjoy it, you thrive, you move forward, 
you become optimistic, you become happy, you become energetic. You love to live in that society, not just for the economy and the technology. There is no point in seeing mosques being filled with people, with worshippers who do not respect each other. What's the point, even if that mosque is packed with 3,000 worshippers? There is no value in it. But if you have a mosque where you have 30 people respecting each other and helping each other, that's a successful mosque. That is a successful community. And therefore, here, Allah is saying three things. لا يسخر قوم من قوم Do not deride each other. A group of people should not deride, deride others. Why? Because ridiculing others and derision comes from arrogance. The basis for it is arrogance and egoism and selfishness. Those people and those communities who are used to, it's normal for them, it's a norm among them to put others down. These communities are sick, believe me. They never smell the fragrance of faith, even though if they call themselves Muslims. But this is not faith. This is fake faith. This is not real faith. So do not. لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا من هون. We put others down. Maybe those that we put down are better than us. more virtuous, they have more value with God than us. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا تَلْمِزُوا means do not defame yourselves. Do not chase others and only look for their mistakes and their errors, trying to defame them. Do not be a fault finding with others just you observe them observe them and you look at them just to find the faults you ignore the good points you ignore the success but you focus on the faults and the failures this is not good don't do that and look what quran says here he says وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not defame yourselves. Nobody is defaming himself. But he is trying to say, this brethren that you are defaming him, he is yourself. He is your community. Because you are supposed to be one. You are supposed to protecting each other. To protect each other. So once you defame him, you are defaming your own self too. Once you damage him, you are damaging yourself too. وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ Tanabuz means insulting each other with nicknames. Do not insult each other with nicknames, with derogatory terms. Don't. Don't do that. There was a reason for this. One of the wives of the Prophet, her name is Safiya bin to Hayibni Akhtab. Her father was a Jew, and the Prophet married her. She converted to Islam. Safiya converted to Islam after the Battle of Khaybar, and the Prophet made her his wife. Some wives of the Prophet, one of them in particular, I leave it for you to research and find out who was she. She kept calling her a Jew, a Jew, you are a Jew. So Safiya came to the Prophet, she was a crying. The Prophet said, why do you cry? She said, because Fulana, she always calls me a Jew. Ya bint al oh the, the daughter of the Jews. The Prophet said to her, never mind. Why are you unhappy? Why do you cry? Tell her, yes, of course. My ancestors were Jews, 
My uncle was Abi Harun wa Ammi Musa wa Zawji Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Famatan Qurani minni. My father was Aaron. My uncle was Moses. And now my husband is Muhammad. What is wrong with me? There is nothing wrong with me. See how the Prophet changes the negativity into positivity? He changes this insult into a compliment. This, these are the lessons of someone who is a peacemaker. Someone who is a bridge builder. He wants to bridge the hearts together. So this is what the Prophet taught his wife. And then the Quran turns to the next one. And he says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu chtanibu kathiram min al-dhan. O who you believe, avoid, shun much conjecture and suspicion. For part of it and some of it is a sin. Inna ba'd al-dhan Stay away from suspicion. If you keep suspecting about this and this and that, at the end of the day, who is the safe one? Who is the healthy one? Who is the perfect one? No one. Because you are treating them with suspicion. In your eyes, in your mind, in your opinion, all of them are bad. Then who is the good? Who is the good? Your majesty is the only one who is good? Then you're going to get depression. You know why? Because you are surrounding yourself with people that you think they are bad. They are not necessarily bad, but you think they are bad. And then when you look at around yourself and everything is negative around yourself, you become negative yourself. You become negative yourself. Shun much of conjecture and suspicion. Do not spy upon one another. Stay away from spying. There is spying, eavesdropping, seeking faults. Some people, they spy on each other to watch and detect their errors and their faults. And then they spread that, which is not good. This is not good. But sometimes there is tahassus, not tajassus. Tahassus is inquiring, inquiring about people. Not to spy on their privacy. No, we have to respect people's privacy. We should not look into their notes, into their books, into their iPhones, into their homes, into their offices. This is not good. But what is good is to inquire if you miss them. If you are used to see someone, a friend, during Friday prayers, during these functions, and now you don't see him, you don't hear from him, then do tahassus, inquire about him, ask, is he okay, are you okay, are you healthy, are you fine, because I haven't seen you for a couple of weeks, this is tahassus, this is positive, this is required, but what is not required and not good is tajassus, is to spy on them and violating their violations, pursuing People's faults, it's not good. وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And then concludes وَلَا يَخْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Nor backbite one another. أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُ Do you want to devour the flesh of your brethren while he's dead? You don't like to do that. فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Reverence God. God is accepting your repentance, forgiving, and He is merciful. The hadith says, ضَعْ أَمْرَ أَخِيكَ عَلَىٰ أَحْسَنِهِ Always think good of your friends. So if he doesn't show up, if he does not return your call, say maybe he's busy. Maybe he lost his phone. Maybe he lost my number. Don't Im Im immediately say he's ignoring me. He's disrespecting me. 
maybe he did not receive your message. Maybe he didn't. You know, sometimes with these iPhones, you write the answer, but you forget to click the send. And after three days, you come back, oh my God, I didn't send it. But then it might cost me or cost you. It might be misunderstood. Your friend might think that you are ignoring him. While you are not ignoring him, you forgot to send, to push the bottom send. So, always give him the benefit of the doubt and say maybe he's busy, not because he's ignoring me. He has children, he has family, he has things to do. When he says something, do not rush to judge him and say, see, he's attacking me. Don't say that. If there is a room, to interpret this sentence, his speech, his comment, in a good way, you must do so. You must do so. And don't interpret his speech or his sentence in a negative way. Don't do that. Because this is your brother. You need to live together. You need to work together. You have the same fate, believe me. We are in the same boat, my friends. Believe me, we are in the same boat. And we're heading to the same destination, same direction. If this boat sinks, we all are going to sink. If this boat survives and reaches the destination safe, we are all going to survive. We must work together. We must protect each other. And we must respect each other, my friends. I ask Allah to bestow on us during these holy nights and holy days the opportunity that we wake up and we try to preserve each other's rights and dignities. I leave you with this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.